I guess welcome to Vancouver. It's uh, first time through for you. Yeah, right. First time we're playing here. Not the first time in Canada, but first time we got a chance to eat Vancouver. Yeah, which which uh, a lot of people, a lot of people would know, is uh, is the home of Network Records. And most people, I would think, in Vancouver, if they got to know the Front Two Four Two, would be through Network Records. The records were uh, signed up to that label, uh, released through uh, through the label locally, which is where we got our videos. Um, I mean, how effective is, uh, have videos been as, as far as introducing Front 242 to North America? Well, I, I, don't know about, I don't know about Canada, but I know that it's really hard to get play on, on air in America because uh, the only real good shows you got are on MTV and usually they play hard rock or metal music. So uh, I don't really know. I know that they play a lot of our videos in clubs in America, which is really good. And, uh, and I think the response of the audience to those clips were um, intense because they were different to what you get from electronic band in general. The, the, the first uh, video I, th I would have seen was, was almost like a performance video, you, the band and its light show, and it created this tremendous sense of an, of an environment. And, uh, and I'm wondering if that's basically the thrust of what you try to do live, which is to create that, a, a kind of overwhelming environment, musical environment. Well, you're probably talking about a master uh, live video. Yeah, right. We're still working the same way, even if we got more, um, more. Um, the show is bigger. We got more lights. Here we go. Um, we got more, uh, more people working for us. So it's uh, it's getting more and more um, uh, extreme as it used to be. Uh, as the when you talk about the mastery period, um, but it's it's right. We try to create something really intense, and uh, live shows for us is the, the right time to enjoy the music we do in the studio, and also it's the right time to meet the people who listen to our music and see the way they react on. So uh, that's what we've been trying uh, since we started, and it's going to be the same today. I, th I think that's, that's probably one thing about the type of music you make that's, that's hard for people to grasp, that it, isn't, it doesn't just start with, a, say, a program and, and some synthesizers. There, there, is a, there is an end to it all in, envisioned right, right from the very beginning. I, I, I would think that that's how it would work. It, would have, it couldn't start, start as just noodling in, a, in an apartment. You're actually thinking of, of the final pro product. Well, it, it's true that the music we do, it's probably 20% 20, 20 is music and 80% 80 is uh, discussions and meeting and, you know, um, sometimes it can be quite boring for the audience because we work a lot of um, on um, sampling and recording, you know, sounds before we start even to do music or we call it collage, you know, put the samples together. But it's true that usually we work with one sound or one note on one part of a rhythm and then we got pictures coming up to us and we try to work ideas around that picture. Like uh, the Welcome to Paradise, uh, the B-side of Ed Hunter was only a sentence we had on, on the recorder, which was uh, no sex until marriage, and that's how we start the track. Is it um, anyone among you visual artists as well? I mean. Yeah, we're really in, um, influenced by movies in general. Um, we can speak also about architecture or um, design, but m most of the time it's by movies, you know, uh, actual movies like Blade Runner, Terminator, Alien, movies like that, or, you know, B-movies. Um, we, we go for every kind of movies a a as, far as, as far as we can find some ideas, but uh, sounds also. Yeah. Well, that's science fiction and junk culture, which is really interesting, because I was actually going to ask you if there's, a, if there's also, say, a European classical tradition in... Or, in in the intellectualization of, of, of what Front 24 does? Well, probably some part of the people does, you know. We, we do sometimes, but you don't have to go too far too often, you know. There's many, many different levels in the music we do. You can take it as a, a dance music and play it in the club and dance on it. But of course, uh, we'd like the people to go a little bit further and try to get pictures in, the, in their head. So that's probably what some people does. Uh, in Europe, I don't know about America, most of the people we, we meet are talking about the, the heavy rhythm, the, the beat on, of the music. Actually, that's something else again, because I see a lot of industrial music or collage is, is the, the real heavy metal today, not the other, what other people would think of as heavy metal. In, in a sense, it's almost con it's conceptual, it's almost intellectual. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just wondering if you'd agree with that. Yeah, I guess, I guess you're right. Okay. Speaking of heavy, <laughs> speaking of heavy metal, I mean it's interesting that, you know, that you're from Belgium, but there's also a really big, from what I gather, underground for for heavy metal in Belgium. I'm just wondering how how deep or how how f widespread are rock and roll influences, if those are the, if that's a term to use, in, in Europe. Well, um, first I must tell you that the music we play before the show, it's ba basically all uh, metal and heavy metal uh, on this tour. 
because we think that right now there's something coming back uh, on that level. We like it because it's once again extreme and you know and heavy. Usually people making that kind of music, they just go for it. They don't you know they don't care about what's going on around them. They just go for what they want, and we like that kind of. Uh, attitude that's basically what we we did when we start you know try to do what we want and not paying attention to uh, anybody saying oh, it won't work and blah 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 so um, in that sense we are influenced by heavy metal but uh, also we sample a few uh, hard rock bands uh, the guitars I won't tell which band but uh, uh, they're pretty cool I guess well um, the uh, what makes me curious is what in in Belgium's culture or history would have created, you know, would have created, say, the roots of Front 242 or this heavy metal underground that exists in that country. Well, talk. I don't know about the heavy metal, but I know about Front. It's really simple. Belgium is a small country nearby all huge culture like the German culture, the Latino culture, the Anglo-Saxon, the English culture. So for us it's really easy to catch all that and also it's e easy to be open to all that and uh, we got no real roots. Our roots are more into uh, old painters and people like that. Flemish painters? For yeah, for example. So for us when we started we had no rules. We were not like an English band was supposed to do pub. English music. A French band is supposed to play French songs, you know, with love songs or Italian songs. German are usually doing, you know, heavy music. We had no rules at all, so we could start from from scratch, you know. And uh, being in Brussels gives us also the opportunity to have like 30 different TV channels to catch about about uh, the atmosphere and the culture and the feeling from every country in Europe and in the world. So that's basically what what makes Front 242. Good enough. Okay. Well, we're going to uh, we are going to run another video uh, front two four two video. Only at this particular point, we don't know what it is, so we're just going to wait and see. So 